everyone and welcome to yet another video in the Java Made Simple tutorial series. In this video we are going to be talking about variables and operators. One of the most powerful features of a programming language is ability to define and manipulate variables. So what are they? Think of them as a containers in which you can store something. What you can store in that container depends on the type of the container that you have. For example, if you have container of type circle, you can only store circles inside. If you have container of type square, you can only st store squares inside of that container. So let's talk about types. Java knows about primitive and reference types. Main difference you need to know about them is that primitive ones always have a value and the reference ones can be null or they can be empty and not hold any value. So if something is null, that means it doesn't hold any value currently. Some of the types that we have in Java are byte, short, int or integer, long, boolean and string. You probably remember strings from our previous video where we have printed a string message. So let's try to do something similar in this one. Let's try to declare a string variable, so a variable of type string, and print it out. How do we do that? First thing when declaring a variable, we need to define a type. So of course, our will be of type string. Next thing we need to do is give it some name, for example, x. And then we have to give it some value. We give value by saying equals and since it's a string, it must be under quotes and the value that we want. We want, for example, hello world again. And as always, we end our statement with a semicolon. Perfect. Now, how do we print it? Luckily, Java does it exactly the same as you would not use variable. So it's exactly at was what we did in the last video. It's System.out.println x. Now, if we run our program, we can click here or we can press Ctrl F5 and it will run it for us. We should be able to see Hello World in the console. And here it is. Perfect. Now that we know how to handle strings, let's see how we can handle numbers or integer. So the number will have type integer. We do exactly the same thing as we did with strings. We define a type, we give it a name and we give it some value. So let's do that. We say int, because that's the type that we want. We give it a name x and we give it a value now without quotes because only strings are under quotes. And we give it a value 419 and we end with a semicolon. You can see that the X is now underlined red. So IntelliJ is complaining about something. It says that the variable X is already defined in the scope. That means that we have defined it somewhere else. In our case here on the line number six. What this means is that the variables, regardless of their type, cannot have name, the same name. So they cannot share names in between them in the same scope. So uh, the scope of uh, that we are talking about here is this scope of this method or of this class. So we cannot use name X because it's already taken by the first string that we created. If we would have removed it, then it would work, but we don't want to remove it. So we want to change the name of the integer. So let's do something like A. Perfect. Now that we have numbers, let's do some math. Arithmetic operators are going to help us there. These operators are symbols that represent a simple computation. For example, plus is addition, minus is subtraction, asterisk or a star is multiplication and slash is division. So let's declare another number and do some math with the numbers that we have. We can say int b equals one. So now we want to combine these two numbers. So we want to do addition. We want to say 419 plus one. We do that by declaring a variable in which we are going to store the result. In our case, C equals A plus B. So we can now try to print it out. System.out.println 
print line C. As you can see, printing strings or printing integers is exactly the same, luckily. Then Control F5 to run our program, and we should be able to see the result. And we can see hello world, which is this line here that we are printing, and we can see the result that we are printing here, which is 420, because 419 plus 1 is 420. Okay, what if we want to divide some numbers? For example, let's change this. Let's say A is now 10, B is now 5, and we want to say A divided by B. That means 10 divided by 5, we would expect result of 2. So if we run our program, we should see result here. Perfect, we got 2 as expected. We can also do exactly here. So instead of using the variables, we can say 10 divided by 5 and we can actually get rid of a and b because we are not using them anymore and if we rerun our program we should get exactly the same result as before so you can see here that we do okay let's try now to switch places of 5 and 10 we can say now uh, 5 divided by 10 we would expect here 0 0.5 so if we run our program again we get zero, which is not what we expect. So we have a problem here. That problem is that Java is doing integer division because we are giving it integers. We, to get the precise result, we need, need to use a different type. That type is double. Double means that we have um, a decimal point and some values after the decimal point. So we have, for example, five dot zero. It's in Java, uh, 1 and 1.0 are not equal. So there are different types. 1 is a type of integer and 1.0 is a double. And you can see here that we have some complaints now. It says require type int, but provide a double. So it's requiring integer here, but we are providing double. And it requires integer here because we expect that the result is an integer, which is wrong in our case. So we want to expect double we change it to the type double. And if we run our program now, we get the correct result. So we have tried out some of the operations here. This would be everything for this video. You can try the rest of them on your own. You can try to define some other types. Also just play with it, see how it goes. And in the next video, we are going to continue with some more advanced stuff. If you get stuck somewhere or if you have any questions, do let me know and I will try to get them as soon as possible. So see you guys in the next video.